Today is part six of a nine part webinar series. And the title of today's webinar is The Value of Video Through the Lens of the Instructional Coach. Today's webinar and the webinar series has been sponsored by SIBME and the Principal Center. I do want to introduce a little bit about SIBME. SIBME is one of the sponsors of the webinar series. And SIBME is an acronym that stands for Seeing Is Believing Me. SIBME is a technology platform to enhance professional learning, whether you're using it for teacher self-reflection, for coaching, or for collaboration, which is one of the focuses of today's webinar, the use of collaboration. We are a professional service provider, which means that we know that having the technology alone doesn't ensure successful implementation. So we've, we pride ourselves in the lessons that we've learned and the way that we're able to help campuses and districts and programs implement the technology to improve teaching practices. And finally, we're a virtual coaching provider. Not everyone has the bandwidth that Dr. Gorey has at her campus. So if you don't have a, uh, a person or a group of people who are designated instructional coaches, we have a cohort of coaches who are have great levels of expertise and experience who work in a blended with a blended model with your teachers to uh, coach them and, and to help them meet their goals. We have some folks entering in the chat right now, and I can see that we have folks joining us. They can see us and hear us. Everything seems like it's good to go. Thank you for sharing that with us. So in the chat, if you let us know, have you been able to join us for the five previous webinars? If you were able to join us for all five webinars, of course, you get the gold attendance star. We'll be sending that out to you <laughs> very soon. But if you were able to join us for one or two of those webinars, please let us know and let us know which ones you're able to join us for. It helps us to know our audience and to know whether or not you have, have all the background information that you need as we move th through today's webinar. In addition to that, we have conveniently provided you a link that will take you to all five of the previous webinars. They're all recorded for you. We have a one-page uh, and sometimes a two-page overview there for you as well. And any handouts that Dr. Gorey has provided to us, we also have those there for you as well. So we really encourage you to visit this site if you haven't had a chance to join us on previous webinars, it will be well worth your while to go back and review the recordings of those webinars. I do want to say that we have with us on the, in the chat representing SIBME today, we do have TJ Hoffman. He's the Director of Customer Success and Marketing. And if you have any technical questions or questions that would be related specifically to SIBME, please just chat those to him and he'll respond to those. And if you have questions that are related to our content, we're going to have Dr. Gorey and her instructional coaches tackle those kinds of questions today. So we'll be sorting those out in the chat as we go through the work we're doing today. Big picture, we are a nine-part webinar series. This is the sixth webinar in the nine parts. The purpose of this webinar series was really to help show instructional leaders how, how to go about the process of implementing video uh, and video-enhanced coaching within your school in this school year. So every webinar has been designed to show you what to do in the month that follows that webinar. We do everything from taking you step by step through the work that needs to be take, take place. In addition, we also delight in giving you some homework to complete so that we're sure you're working down that path toward successful implementation. And ultimately, the goal has been that Dr. Gorey will share um, the steps in the process that will help you to follow um, the plan that she has very successfully used with her folks at Frank Cohn. Let me do a quick check in on the chat, making sure everything is still good to go. So I'm seeing some folks who are saying this is their first visit to our webinar series, Dr. Corey. So we're going to give them a little background, certainly, and help them catch up with us. And those of you who are returning, we really do appreciate to have you come back and continue joining us. It really is a, an amazing opportunity. So on we go. 
Um, my name is Allison Burnett. I am going to be the webinar facilitator today. It is my pleasure to, this is one of my favorite parts of the month as I get to facilitate uh, Dr. Gorey's webinar. Yeah. Um, I am a lifer, an educational lifer. So uh, this is my 35th year in education as a teacher, instructional coach, a consultant, and author. Currently, I'm the Director of Professional Learning and Virtual Coaching for SIBME, in addition to working as an adjunct professor at University of Houston, where I work with students who are on the path to becoming uh, teachers as well. I'd like to introduce Dr. Gorey. She is our featured presenter. She has brought two of her instructional coaches with us today, and they'll get a chance to introduce themselves as well. I do want to briefly say that Dr. Gorey has over 26 years of educational experience in teaching and leadership. She was the 2015-2016 Sci Fair Elementary Principal of the Year, and with nearly 50 or right at 50 elementary schools in the district, it's the third largest district in the great state of Texas, and to have have been selected as the elementary principal of the year in uh, out of that number of elementary schools, of course, is quite, quite the honor. I also want to say, Dr. Gorey, before I give you a chance to introduce yourself, I do want to say that during each of these webinars, I get my quotable quotes from you. And last time you said something that, uh, and you're very reserved, as am I, but you <laughs> said last time that you just really couldn't understand how principals just wouldn't feel a fire about getting started with using video to coach their teachers and to grow their teachers that way. And that really stuck with me. And, you know, we're always wondering why don't more principals do something like this? And that was really the impetus be behind starting the webinar series is our belief is if we show principals how to do this, uh, and it is, it does feel sort of risky, doesn't it? If we show them how to do this, uh, we give them the step-by-step -step process of doing that, that we're going to see more implementation and more successful implementation. So your quotable quote from from last time, having that fire to do this, the desire to do this, and then also to say that it's having that fire and having that desire is great. Um, and I'll also, the, the other quote I like to use from you is that, you know, there really are no shortcuts to um, uh, just to being exceptional, but there is a path and there is a process. And that's what these webinars, this webinar series is about, is having you show us the, the plan and the process and the path that you've, you have followed successfully and that you have built over the course of many years um, before using SIBME as well as since you've been using SIBME. So we really do delight in taking this time to hear from you and to hear from the instructional coaches that you brought with you today as we continue to learn about how you're using uh, video at Francone. Dr. Gorey, would you say a few things to introduce yourself? Well, welcome back to all of our returning participants and to our new participants today. Welcome to um, an opportunity to change instruction in the classroom to impact learning for kids in a way that has never happened before. I am a junior lifer. If Allison is a lifer, I'm a junior lifer with more than 26 years of experience. Um, my video coaching experience is six years strong, um, three without Sydney and three with Sydney. And I have been quoted since Allison is quoting me as saying that I will not coach without Sydney. When we introduced the Sydney platform to our uh, coaching team, it transformed the way that we um, went through that process. So I have been video coaching for six years total and um, have seen. Um, tremendous, the tremendous impact it has on teacher growth and student learning. So welcome to all of our new participants and welcome back to our returning participants. Thank today you. Have, so today I have with me, I'm delighted to have two of my instructional coaches who have been coaching with me for three years. They joined me at Frank Hone on this journey at Frank Hone for three years. This is our third year here at Frank Hone. Um, and we came to, to impact instruction and to turn around the instructional practices that were happening here. Um, it's no secret that this was, and I say was, a struggling campus. We are no longer a struggling campus and we do contribute our success to part of our success, a large part of our success to the video coaching process. So Melissa Geary joined um, the team with me in 2015, as did Heidi Tran. Melissa is our reading language arts instructional coach and Heidi is the math, science, math in, uh, instructional coach. And um, they're here with you today to share their perspective from uh, the coach's viewpoint of how using video has transformed that process for them also. And I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, hello, I'm Melissa Geary. I'm a math 
the boy said, um, I'm 21 years of teaching experience. And I, one of the things I wanted to just add is I actually was a coach coached through Dr. Gorey when I was a second grade teacher for her when I came to um, SciFair. But um, now I'm getting to use SIVME as from the coach's point of view. So I've seen it from the teacher and how it helped me. Now I'm getting to use it to help me. And I'm Heidi Dran. This is my 19th year in education and my third year at, uh, here at Franco, like Dr. Gorey said, and I am uh, the math instructional coach. Well, thank you and welcome. And we really appreciate your being with us today because we really do want to look at the use of video through the lens of the instructional coach. So appreciate the uh, your effort in, in being with us today. So Dr. Gorey, we have some folks who haven't had a chance to join us for any of the webinars. Some folks are returning and have seen one or two. Um, I do want us to take a moment to go back through those objectives from webinars one through five. If you've joined us and you were with us for some of those webinars, please don't feel like this is redundant or repetitive. We learn through repetition. And so by listening to Dr. Gorey, take us through this path in a sequential way from webinars one through five. It's really very valuable. So Dr. Gorey, would you guide us through those objectives from previous webinars? Absolutely. Webinar one, we had three objectives, assessing and building your school culture. That was determining your why. Why do you want to use video? You shouldn't do anything if it does not have a purpose and a place. Um, building the capacity, calibrating, making sure everyone on your team is on the same page with the video coaching process. If we're not all coaching the same way, or no, that's not the right language. If we're not all coaching for the same goal, shall I say, then you're not coaching for a purpose that will benefit instruction or students. Um, preparing for the infomercial, that is your one shot, that one opportunity to get buy-in and to get it right. In webinar two, we moved on to preparing for coaching cycle one. Coaching cycle one is the teacher self-reflection cycle here at Frank Home. Um, the value and importance of coaching, it's fact-based. It's where perception meets reality. You can't dispute what happened in, uh, on a video. Um, planning um, the plan and the process for the coaching teacher self-reflection. That is when um, basically one of the greatest forms of professional growth, in my opinion, here's one of my quotes, is uh, self-reflection. If you can see that it's actually happening, then you can grow from it and make adjustments and change it. Um, the Sydney platform is so beneficial for all three of our cycles, but definitely for the self-reflection cycle. In webinar three, um, how leaders inspect what they, they expect, that using the Sydney analytics, it allows you to see when a video was uploaded. It allows you to see if teachers actually posted their self-reflection video. It allows you to see how many comments have been there. I can't personally see their video unless they share it with me, but I can see some analytics. I can see some things to make sure that the self-reflection is taking place, to make sure that comments have been added to the video. Um, get, uh, the gist of the coaching cycle, free video coaching. It allows teachers to have that comfort zone to come in and talk to you about what is this going to look like? What are you going to do with the video? Just to reassure them, you've shared that information already, but there may be additional questions and it gives you an opportunity to answer those additional questions. Um, the How the Sydney platform powers a school's coaching cycle. It is, I will not coach without it. I said that in the beginning, I will not coach without the Sydney platform. It is so simple so easy to use, it's a time saver, and um, it has the convenience of allowing a teacher to, from the from anywhere there's Wi-Fi, anywhere there's a connection, they can view videos, they can respond to videos, and coaches can do the same as well. So it definitely helps power the coaching cycle. Then we move to webinar four. Webinar four, uh, what the coaches need to consider in pre preparing for filming, going into the classroom, knowing the traffic patterns, knowing what the classroom set up, what the how the classroom is set up so that when you go into video you're not disrupting the flow of anything our kids are very comfortable with videotaping our teachers are comfortable with it so whenever we go in with a device there's no disruption to um, what what's happening in the classroom if you have a situation where you don't have that level of comfort you have to go in in advance go in in advance and make sure that you're not doing anything to disrupt the flow of the classroom um, it, uh, the video features that are available using Sydney, tons of features. My favorite is the timestamp comments. I, uh, I talk about that all the time. Um, I, uh, there's so many features on that, that Sydney's consistently adding, um, but timestamp comments is definitely my favorite. When you see a moment that you want to send a comment to a teacher, 
it stops the well the video stamp the time the comment stamps on that video at that moment and when the teacher goes back to review it they can click on that comment and it'll take them to that moment in the video um the next one is the post video conference is important because we uh, annotate our videos in Sydney and the teachers provide feedback back to us, when we come for the post video conference, we already know what their thoughts are. They know what our thoughts are. And it's really just coming together to, su to summarize. And sometimes that opportunity to plan for the next cycle happens during that post video conference. And how uh, the Sydney Clef platform powers coaching cycle two, I've I said many times, it's just so easy to use. And there's so many things that you can um, do within the platform that it makes the coaching cycle seamless. It just makes this coaching video coaching seamless altogether. Webinar five, our, our previous webinar that we just finished last month, understanding heavy coaching. Heidi is our heavy coach. I give her the crown for heavy coaching expert. She has heavy coached a couple of our teachers to success. And we are very proud of that. That's looking at those staff members who don't align with your instructional guarantees. We have, in our previous um, videos, we talked about writing some instructional guarantees. What do you guarantee will happen in the classroom every single day? Do your teachers know what those instructional guarantees are? Do they know that, do you, do you inspect those instructional guarantees? And when those are not met here at Franco, we move to what we call heavy coaching, and that's more frequently, and Heidi will speak to that in, in today's webinar. Um, the biggest time saving feature, the sync notes. You can actually watch the video and type your notes at the, record the video, I'm sorry, and type your notes at the exact same time you are recording. That is the sync note feature. Love that feature as well. And then you're not publishing your comments until you choose to. So even if you're typing really fast and you have some things you want to go back and edit, it's perfectly okay. You have that option using sync notes to so go back and edit. And then once you're done, you can publish your comments for the um, other person, the person who's in your huddle to see. And then we were introduced to the elements, the important elements of cycle three. Our cycle two and cycle three are very similar. We have a pre-video conference and a post-video conference. The difference is cycle two, their teacher led goes. In cycle three, coach led goes. The coach determines the goal or goals that we're going to work on. Um, when we come in for videotaping cycle three. Thank you so much, Dr. Gorey, for that review of webinars one through five. Let's go ahead and get started with some new material here in webinar six, and let's get those instructional coaches working. So we, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, have, we have three objectives for today to understand the purpose of and process for building out Sydney's video library, and to also re review the role that video plays in collaboration and learning from peers who are modeling for one another, and then finally to explore the role that video plays in collaboration in terms of our PLC models. So uh, let's go ahead and let me define a few things here for the Vib uh, Sydney Video Library and then I'm going to I'm going to ask the instructional coaches to join me and, and help talk about how you're using the video library there at Francone. So the objective is to understand the purpose of and process for building out Sydney's video library. And I do want to build a little background around that for you. And that is to say that the video library feature, and I'm going to just circle it a little bit here. You're looking at a dashboard view right now. If you join, if you log into Sydney on the web version of things, by default, you're taken to your dashboard view. And you're looking at the dashboard view of an account owner who has all the whistles and bells in their account. And you can see the video library tab here and the account video library information here. That video library is empty. It's like a library with no books. It's a library with no videos. It's there for, it's not something that Sydney builds out for you. It's there for the school to build out. And typically the school builds that out in the way that makes sen most sense for them. And usually that is through having some exemplar videos within that library. This screenshot is just showing you what the video library view looks like whenever we have some videos populated in that library. And notice that we can put those videos in the library in an uncategorized way or we can categorize them by subject and topic so they can be easily searched. So as an account owner, you get the opportunity of deciding if you want a video library and if you want the video library, you get the choice of deciding whether or not you want teachers to have 24-7 access to that library, which makes a lot of sense for them, um, certainly for them to do. 
So uh, having said all that, then I'm going to ask um, Melissa to talk with us uh, a little bit more about how Frank Cohn is using that particular feature of the video library. Well, what I want to say is when I, we had all the bells and whistles with our same shot like Sandy showed. And when I did my first couple of videos, I thought the library was intentionally my library. So I, I, when my cycle two, I had some videos that were really good. So I started to label them and I categorized them. And I thought it was my library. I, initially, I thought it was my library. So I labeled them. It was after some time that I had some teachers that said, oh, I noticed there was a video in the library. And it was so-and-so and she was wearing a crown. And I'm like, uh, that's my teacher that I videoed. What did I do? So it was by accident that it was created. Um, but I didn't delete it. I didn't know how. Um, and from that point, um, I started to refer my teachers to that video. I did go back to the teacher that I had coached and videoed and told her, look, um, I accidentally did this and it's posted on there. Do you mind if I continue to use it? Because it's a really good video that shows this, this, and that. I, you know, explained the highlights of what I saw. And she was like, really welcomed with it. Okay, yes, you can. Um, she moved, but we still have her video today. And we have some actual coaches who sometimes don't feel maybe that they're as proficient maybe in that guided reading, for instance. So they have referred the teachers to that video. So it was an accidental occurrence, but we have started building our library here at Frank Home. And now what we've done is we've uploaded other videos that are exemplar videos of teachers doing um, what we expect, are beating the expectations. Um, and we use them because we do have a lot of teachers that say, I need a visual. I don't understand. You know, you're telling me all this document, you're all this vocabulary. You're how what does it look like? So now we have the videos there. Um, and we also have some professional development videos. If we have somebody within the district that comes and gives us some professional development, like we have a district coach and she's done some plannings and I've uploaded them there so that we can continue to use them. So an accident that is exactly what we should have done. And it happened. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Dr. Gorey, is there anything you want to add to what Melissa said about the use of the video library at Franken? Or Heidi, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, I would just like to add that some of the greatest discoveries happen by accident. So in our first couple of years, and I think you was it year one or year two? Year one. Year one, we were not, we year one using the Sydney platform, we were using it for the coaching process. We were not ready to graduate to the video library yet. And I want the listeners to hear that we we are more experienced with Sydney now. So we do a lot more with the platform because of our experience with it. But in year one, we were not ready to use the video library, but we're glad, happy that Melissa accidentally put those videos there. I personally would look at the videos and think, oh my gosh, people are uploading to the library already. I didn't think they were ready to do that not knowing that Melissa did it by accident, but it has been a wonderful discovery for us. Now we're very comfortable with um, all of the platform and using that library. So those videos, we do use them as coaches to go in and, and look at exemplar lessons before we perhaps coach someone in a particular area. So it's multifaceted and we use it in a way that benefits the teachers and the coaches and definitely for professional development. So it was an accident that really uh, was a huge benefit to our campus. Thank you. So let's go ahead to our first polling question. The polling question has to do actually with the video library and the use of the video library. And we're going to post those questions for you. And I'm going to um, I'm going to read through those. And then Dr. Gorey, as we post the results of the of the poll, we'll ask you to comment on that. So we're asking the question, and we'd love for our our participants to uh, uh, to take part in this poll. For what purpose are you most likely to use the video library? So some of the suggestions that Melissa gave and Dr. Gorey gave, and then just some additional things as well. So is it a place to honor teacher expertise? So it's sort of like the Teaching Hall of Fame if you make it into the video library. That would be answer A. Or B, it will be used as a part of that new teacher in-service training at the beginning of the year. So we're always scrambling to say, how are we going to catch these new teachers up to all of the work that we did last year in this building so that they have a sense of context and a sense of what we've been working on? 
Or is it C, the library will house best practice videos that will clearly, as Melissa said, show teachers how. People want to see that physical model of how to do something. Hearing it, listening to it um, might not be enough. So we need to see, show folks how. So showing teachers how to gain student attention or showing teachers how to check for understanding or how to teach routines and procedures or increase rigor or actively engage students. So it's the best practice, best practices in the video library. Or do you think you would use it for D, to increase vertical alignment by having each grade level or content submit model lessons of how they're teaching students to meet their most critical state standards? And this isn't something that Melissa or Dr. Gorey talked about, but it is some of the ways that other schools within SciFair are using the video library for that vertical alignment piece. So it's, it's invaluable for a fifth grade teacher to be able to see how the sixth grade the sixth grade teachers are teaching a particular concept, um, to understand uh, where kids came from in the in the third grade, what we're doing with them in the fourth grade, and where they're headed in the sixth grade. So let's go ahead and post the results of that poll. And Dr. Gree, if you'll do a little thinking out loud with us as you're looking at how the results played out. Wow. 100% chose C. Well, there are no wrong answers. So however you choose to <laughs> use the library, it is beneficial to you. So, but I agree, that is definitely a way to show best practices and um, to have teachers visit that library at any time and go and pull up a video. If there's something they're about to teach or something that's um, that they need a little bit more support with, a library definitely can be used for that. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Well, we're going to come back to talk about the timing of the video library in just a little bit. But right now, we're going to jump on to objective two, and we're going to hear from Heidi as we talk about this. Objective two is review the, the role video plays in collaborative learning from peer modeling. And we know sometimes the very best resources that we have as teachers our other teachers in the building. So Heidi, talk to us a little bit about objective two as it relates to the work that you're doing. Um, there's two main ways that beyond the regular coaching cycle that I've been using Sydney. And the first one is just recording other teachers um, for um, a teacher that I might be working with for them to observe. So before, if we wanted to have a teacher go observe other teachers in our building, you'd have to get and pay for some, find somebody to cover their classroom, and then hopefully be able to go observe with them so that you can have a discussion with them after about what was seen. And hopefully they noticed what you wanted them to notice right when it was happening without disrupting um, that teacher's classroom. So. With Sydney, I've been able to change what the way we do that. Um, I will actually go and videotape the teachers. So I have my list of um, go-to teachers that I go to for specific things dealing with math instruction and math instructional strategies. And then I have my specific teachers that I go to for classroom management purposes. And so I will go and actually record the 30, 45 minute video. And that the original teacher that I'm wanting to um, do the observation is, is still in their classroom. They haven't left their classroom. We're not needing to get a sub for them. Um, after I videotape them, I go back and I watch and I annotate the video actually pointing out all of those strategies that I'm wanting that teacher to learn from so that they can actually see what it looks like, what it sounds like, what are the kids doing, what is the teacher doing, what are they saying, um, so that then they can take those strategies and then apply them in their own classroom. And so after I annotate that with my comments, I will also throw in some questions. So that gets that teacher to start reflecting on what they are observing and then how it might be different from what they're doing in their own classroom at that time. Um, I will then share our vid the video in our coaching huddle um, so the teacher can watch the video. And then we'll come back and we'll 
um, debrief about it. We'll have a discussion about what are the strategies that they notice um, while they were watching the video. What were some of the things uh, that their takeaways were? And after we have that discussion, we'll pick one or two um, strategies that they want to try to start implementing in their class, either instructionally or classroom management wise. Um, and we really look at both of those sides. And then we build from there going to working on those strategies. And I found that one of the advantages of using Sydney this way is the teacher can come back and watch that video over and over again if they need to. Um, because sometimes we don't get everything in that first sit down or even like when you're watching a movie, if you watch it the second time, you pick up on things you didn't see that first time. And so sometimes that occurs again with teachers and their observations. And then another advantage is after you do that original video, if you need other teachers to see that, and you can use that same video again without having to go in and do another video of a teacher. Um, and that works especially well with the timing of the school year because you're not going to see those settings of those routines and procedures come April when we do that all at the beginning of the year. So then we can keep reviewing those same videos. So that's the first way that I'm um, using the Sydney platform. And then the second one, um, one that Dr. Gorey touched on is for heavy coaching. Um, I have done heavy coaching with a few teachers um, here that were in need of assistance. And so I would go in and meet with the teacher, kind of have a conversation about what they are noticing in their classroom, how they are feeling as far as instructionally and classroom management wise. And then where we would normally have gone before SIBME is just doing our a weekly observation and jotting down notes and hopefully remembering everything that we saw or we heard. And then hopefully the teacher remembers. But with um, heavy coaching with SIBME, I actually now go in and record once a week um, mm -hmm. that teacher in their classroom. It is not a scheduled timed um, observation because the strategies I'm wanting them to pick up, I'm wanting them to use all, all the time, not during a, okay, I'm going to come in Wednesday at 1030. So they're going to make sure that they're doing those strategies. I want to be able to see those strategies all the time. and so. Um, the going in and the teachers have been very um, receptive and comfortable with knowing that I could come in at any time um, to video. And it's actually worked out very well because then I've been able and they've been able to see different points in their lessons. So it's not all the same and it's not all with the same kids. Um, I'll then go back and annotate the video, noting the positives that I've seen giving them questions so that they can start doing some self-reflection. Um, I'll point out areas where improvement might be needed or even um, try this strategy instead of what you did or um, pointing out, especially for math, um, math vocabulary terms that would be better suited for our kids so that that vocabulary can stick with them. Um, when I do ask the questions, I do require them to answer them in Sydney um, so that one, I know that they have watched and they have read the comments and two, so it becomes a collaborative effort of helping that teacher. I'm there as wanting them to be as successful as they possibly can. And so whatever I can do to help them, I want to be able to do. Um, then we'll come back and we'll post conference after the video and kind of talk about the strategies, um, what they noticed when they were watching the video. And then again, we'll pick one or two things that we want to work on um, to improve either instruction or classroom management for that upcoming week. And when I go back to um, record the next week, then I'm specifically looking for those strategies that we talked about that previous week. So 
each time I go in, I, we're building that teacher's toolbox of strategies to better their instruction or their classroom management that they're doing. Um, when I heavy coach, I do that for about six to eight weeks. Um, and then kind of getting a good idea of are we making improvements? And with a teacher that I was that I've been heavy coaching this school year, um, we've been successful in these six to eight weeks. And so we are now that we've come back from um, Christmas break, I'm now going to video and meet every other week so that that builds more of his own capacity to be self-reflective of what he's doing every day in his classroom. And then it gives him time to try out more strategies. And then I can come in every other week and kind of just start to um, tweak some of the things so that we can just improve a little bit better. And then I'll eventually go to once a month. Um, another teacher that I did heavy coaching with, um, our first year here was still struggling after that six to eight weeks. He needed a little bit more time with it. And so I continued going in every week and that continued all the way up to the end of the school year. And when she came back that following year, all of those strategies that we had talked about that entire year, she was putting into place. And even as I was in that heavy coaching cycle with her, each suggestion that I gave, she was willing to try and she would even put it in place that day that we had that same conversation. And so um, that has helped both of them to grow and be more self-reflective of what's going on in their classroom. And because that's our whole goal is for that teacher to be self-reflective every day and be able to know what's best there for their kids and for themselves as far as instruction and classroom management. So those have been my two um, big ways that I've been um, using the Sydney platform. Thank you so much, Heidi. I'm, Dr. Gorey, I'm going to ask you to extend or add anything you'd like. I just wanted to make two comments. One is, just as you were talking, Heidi, I was thinking it back to the old days and to the haphazard nature of the way we used to, you know, take take those maybe new or struggling teachers and and we would get the sub for them for the day and we would take them into different classrooms so they could you know, sort of haphazardly observe what was happening in other classrooms and hope that they were going to see what we really needed for them to see or wanted them f for them to see. So the expense and the, uh, I guess, the spontaneity and the hopefulness, fingers crossed that this is going to work. And Sydney, it sounds like, has made your process much more systematic and probably a little bit more cost effective. And then the second thing I wanted to say, Heidi, is what a great connection to the things we talked about in webinar five, especially. So we finished up the third coaching cycle discussion in webinar five, where we said, okay, we've gone through coaching cycle one, which was teacher self-reflection, coaching cycle two, where the teacher selects the goal coaching cycle three where the coach is the person who is selecting and identifying the goal and then sometimes uh, we have to continue that on we have to uh, even though we've done all that we can do and we've seen tremendous growth and pro progress we still may have to do some heavy coaching for some of those teachers and you took us through that process so nicely with your description of how you're using video to assist those teachers uh, Dr. Gorey, is there anything you want to add to what Heidi had to say? Just a couple of points. One being, um, Heidi said the teachers were very comfortable with her coming in every week because that's the culture that we have established here at Francone. We use our one opportunity to introduce it well. And so that's our culture. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable. And because they're, they're co comfortable because coaches and evaluators are not the same. Uh, that's the point that I um, have stated many times. I do not evaluate any teachers that I coach because we don't cross the line. Coaching is strictly for growth. And that's exactly what Heidi explained, the growth process. There is nothing about evaluation. There is nothing punitive to the process. It's all about evaluation. And the collaboration, I hope that our listeners caught on to that, the amount of collaboration that the platform allows you to have. Heidi annotates, and then the teachers respond in the platform. So that collaboration piece is there. And lastly, the taking the teacher into a classroom, I call it the walk of shame, where everyone knows where you're going. They know that, oh, this person's struggling, so they're having to go and observe class, uh, someone else's classroom 
up for the day or for half a day. Doesn't happen. There's no embarrassment. There's no shame. You log into the platform, go into your huddle, and you observe the video and annotate or respond to your coach's comment. So that's what the Sydney platform allows us to do. Thank you. <laughs> so we do have a couple of questions in the chat that I want to go ahead and address at this point before we go on to objective three. And so let's see here. Um, and TJ, help me if I miss any of these. I'm looking at Justin's comment and he's saying, you know, I would love to hear more about annotating a library video. And he, he thinks that's very cool. Uh, do you make a, co a copy for the teacher you're coaching or annotate the original video for everyone? I'm just going to address that from the perspective of Sydney, first of all, to say that we don't annotate, we don't have the opportunity of annotating videos that are in the video library. Those are purely there uh, as the video. So if we want to do that annotating, those are some things we're going to have to do by creating our coaching huddles or our collaboration huddles. That's where we can make that annotating, that timestamp feedback that Dr. Gorey was talking about a little bit earlier in our webinar today. Um, so I think we've addressed that particular question. And let's see if we have any other questions before we go, go on to objective three and continue, of course, wanting you to ask your great questions of our panelists today. All right, so we're going to, oh, okay, here we go. So will you elaborate on the goal setting and use of feedback from video during heavy coaching. So we want to be elaborate on the goal setting and the use of feedback from video during heavy coaching. Um, goal setting happens each week. So at the very beginning of um, when I start heavy coaching, I will set out our goal. And our whole goal is for the teacher to be successful because the teacher that is struggling, most likely they know that they are struggling. And so it's not something that is new to them. And so I am there purely as stating as I am here to help you grow. And that is what I am wanting to do. And I'm not expecting that growth to happen overnight or even in just one month. It depends on the teacher themselves and how much experience they have. And so that growth happens slowly over time. So goal setting happens every single week. Of what is it that is our goal for this week that we want to work on? And then when I come in and do my observations, I'm specifically looking for that goal, plus everything we have already talked about before. So I'm not forgetting about all the other previous times that we've met and done observations. And so it's all a growing of that toolbox. And when we come back at the end, when we meet for that week, we're discussing what happened in that video, but not just what the feedback I have to give about that one video, because I don't go in just that one time. I travel in every single day at least once in the morning and once in the afternoon to see what is going on. And so when I'm providing that feedback, I'm providing that feedback on that video, but also when we go into our post-conference, I'm providing everyday feedback of what I'm noticing that's going on with the kids and what the teacher is saying or doing. And so it is a long process, but it's a process that happens every single week. So it's not something that we just set a goal out at the very beginning and then just provide feedback as we go. It's what is our one thing or maybe two things that we're going to need to work on for this next week. And that's all I want them to work on for that week while they're still doing all of the previous stuff. And so it makes it more manageable for them. And I start off those things that I'm going to get, we're going to get the most bang for our buck. So those things that are going to really impact either their instruction or classroom management, um, the most, I will start with those first, and then we will slowly start moving through the things that we need to work on. Uh, Dr. Gorey or Melissa, would you like to add anything to what Heidi just said? 
pretty much covered everything. And the whole, the, the purpose, I wanted her to hit the point, hit on the point that we start with what's the most impactful first, and she did. Sometimes when you start, or no, when you start with what's most impactful, sometimes it will take care of some other things mm -hmm. that may be of concern. So that is something that's very purposeful. Um, I do want our listeners to know that you shouldn't have a large percentage of your teachers that need heavy coaching. The three cycle process is in place to help with all of the concerns teachers may have. That's why we do the self-reflection and then the teacher set goals and then the coach led goals. So it's a very small percentage of your staff, very small, um, that should need heavy coaching if you do those other cycles with fidelity. Thank you so much. So let's jump ahead to objective three. I'm going to uh, going to get Melissa involved again here. And so now we want to look at exploring the role video plays in collaborative learning, specifically with PLCs. And I can take you down memory lane to about 2004, the first time I heard about professional learning communities and had the opportunity to attend some of their conferences and conventions. And it really was a game changer. And it really changed our thinking from looking at ourselves as being members of a department or a grade level and really thinking of ourselves as members of a professional learning community. Changed everything from the way that we identified our agenda to the really how we spent our time in our meetings, focusing on answering those really critical questions that PLCs ask us to focus on. So what do we want students to know? How will we know that they know it? What do we do if they don't? What do we do if they do? And it, and it changed the conversation dramatically. So now we have the opportunity of embedding um, video or using video as part of our PLC process. And Melissa, I'm excited to hear you talk with us about how you been using video at Francone as part of your PLC process? Well, I can tell you that um, being in the job I am, it is a two-person job, or it has been for three years, but this, this semester I had my partner when I'm a teacher. So I needed a collaboration partner, and Sydney became that person. So that's how I started to create a collaboration huddle. Um, with um, my specific grade levels. And I had one grade level that I inherited through the maternity leave that was very challenging. Uh, they were very experienced teachers, you know, like from one year to 10, and they knew everything. And I didn't even need planning because they were, they, they knew what they were doing. Um, so I had to be creative in my thinking. I had to move their cheese, so to speak. So I challenged them to look at their instruction and what was lacking. They didn't quite get that. So I pinpointed to small group reading with reading readiness students. And I went ahead and I, in this huddle, I put up my own personal video that I had done with the same students that they have in their classroom that happen to be pre-K students. Um, and I shared that video with them first. Um, so I took out the risk factor because I was willing to do it myself. Um, and we put it in there to view. And when you do the collaboration huddle, they can comment on my video. And I asked them, please comment on my video. I want to know what you're thinking. And so that we could use it that way as a collaboration tool. Um, and they did. And they kind of started to see, oh, okay, this is the how. And I was like, okay, now that you see the how, now I'm going to give you two weeks. And I want you to upload a video that we can share and use at planning so we can talk and we can see, you know, take it apart, look at highlights and things. Um, during this time, I had one teacher that um, was the veteran teacher of the team that really, really, really didn't want to move anything and she was great. Um, she came to me and she's like, I don't think I can upload this video. Uh, it was just my time, man. I mean, she found all her own points. It allowed her to be self-reflective, something she hadn't done before, even through the cycle. She, you know, she, it was new and she was like, can we do it on this? Can we have a different huddle? And I did coach her. I did a little cycle with her and I, you know, annotated her and things to give her suggestions. And she was very appreciative. And that was like her turning point um, mm -hmm. because now she's more open. She wants feedback. She wants you to see what you're doing. And then I did challenge her that, okay, now that we had this side collaboration, now I want you to be able to go ahead and upload a new video. Um, so it was a change in her. Also, I have another group that got a lot of new resources, a ton of new resources. 
So once again, I created a collaboration huddle and I said, you know what, let's video each other using these resources so that maybe it can give us some ideas and how to implement it throughout our day. And they were like, you know, they were real resistant. Um, but I had the first teacher that took the risk um, with that new uh, resource. They were happened to be the bots. And it was a technology a piece that a lot of our veteran teachers didn't feel comfortable using the technology. But once they saw it, they saw the how through the videos, they're like, oh, we can do this. So it was a way to sneakily tell them, I expect you to use it, but let's help each other do it. So that's how we've used uh, I've used it with my grade levels. It, it became my partner. Sivmi helped me. Um, and I also had another um, part where I needed to teach. Te I had teachers that needed a refresher on a beginning of year assessment that we needed. So I put another, created another collaboration huddle with them, but myself video, uh, videoing some students using the assessment, how it is, had the teachers view it. And if they had questions and they would come to me or we could have a formal you know meeting but it was like look at this first and if you still need me then I'm here because I was being you know I was going in every direction pre-k through five which was new for me thank you for talking with us about how you're using video with your PLCs at Frank Cone and it really sounds like it's increasing the amount of collaboration and and giving folks the opportunity of seeing one other uh, one other teach the old the old uh, PLC um, uh, humor was that some teachers, uh, the only thing we have in common is uh, the parking lot. So through the use of collaboration huddles, it sounds like we're getting the opportunity, sometimes maybe for the first time, to see one another teach and learn from one another's creativity. Uh, Dr. Gorey, Heidi, is there anything you want to add to what Melissa said about the PLC and video model at Franco? Well, and it's, it's our opportunity to expand our use of um, the CB platform. Our teachers are comfortable self-reflecting within their classroom. I can record myself, I can self-reflect. I'm comfortable with my coach coming in and I'm comfortable with my coach giving me feedback. But now how do I feel about my colleagues seeing what happened in my classroom? So we are growing in that area. And because of the Sydney platform, we are able to do it in a very efficient and effective way. So their resistance was, oh, other teachers are going to see me. It's, uh, it's one thing when it's private and it's one-on-one, but we are definitely, we have expanded our thinking that we are here to support one another. Um, everyone needs to be able to be the, the teacher. We say often, our teachers are not teachers of a grade level. You are a teacher of your classroom. You are the teacher of the entire grade level. So that's one way that we are making that actually happen through the collaboration portion and PLCs using the SIPI platform. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about from the perspective of the platform, just going to show you a few screenshots that will make it really concrete what Melissa was talking about earlier, and then we'll get into polling question B as we head toward the homework portion of our webinar. So Melissa was talking about creating these collaboration huddles. This is just a screenshot of what a collaboration huddle might look like. So as you can see, this is a collaboration huddle that was created for a social studies PLC. And huddles, these huddles are by invitation only. So Melissa was probably the administrator of this collaboration huddle. She created it. She decided who was appropriate to invite into that huddle. And once invited into the huddle, then that's where we share things like our videos. This particular huddle has eight videos in it. And there were four artifacts or four resources that were shared from within that huddle. And the thing I like about it is it's so transparent. It's so easy to see who is participating in this huddle at all times. No one can be in there that we're not going to know is in there with us and know the reason that they're in there with us. Here's an example, just a screenshot of some th thumbnails of one particular um, huddle could have 20, 25, 30 videos in it. Here I'm just showing you a screenshot of a huddle that, and there are eight videos within this screenshot. This actually happens to be from my course at, my class at uh, University of Houston downtown. We can also, in addition to sharing videos, we can share resources that are appropriate to our huddle. So it's really cool to have, for example, resources that we might find that are little research-based articles that, do, that, that are related to the work that we're doing as a PLC. Uh, perhaps we're going to share some of those businessy things like the calendar that we're following and so forth. So that all those things can be shared right there in that collaboration huddle in addition to the video. We can also participate in huddle discussions. So 
putting out a huddle discussion question, perhaps it's a goal setting question, or perhaps it's a question about looking at some of the data that we've been reviewing in relation to perhaps a strategy or a standard that we've been working on. And then having everyone within that huddle having the ability to participate in that conversation to even include documents if they would like to. Um, so we continue that conversation, extend that conversation. And then, as was mentioned earlier, the ability to share feedback. I don't so much like whenever we're talking about collaboration huddles, really to use the word feedback. I really like to say it's ability to share our celebrations. So I don't encourage my, my students uh, to share feedback. I encourage them to look for things that they want to celebrate that their peers have done. And this is an opportunity then to praise their peers. This is an opportunity to ask questions of their peers, but certainly they have that opportunity to to, and, and, and as Melissa said, it's not just one way feedback or one way celebration. There's the opportunity to reply to the comments that have been made to you. So the conversation continues. And as Dr. Gorey said, these conversations are time stamped, they're time specific. So we can look at a specific moment in time, 13 minutes and 39 seconds. And we can see a comment that in this case, I made at 13 minutes and 39 seconds. And we can have a conversation around that moment within the video. That might be the critical moment. That might be the moment of instruction that kind of makes or break th breaks things. It's a moment where we can see if students uh, got it or they lost it or they never had it. So I love, as Dr. Gorey does, I love the timestamp feature of things. And even on our collaboration huddles, the ability to really make every moment a teachable moment by exploding and expanding on that particular, um, the, that particular information, that particular point in time. All right, so we do have some questions in the chat that I want to go to, and let's see what we have here. So Sharnice says, uh, Vicki's asked a good question about, and let's go back to Vicki's question, what year in the process did you layer in PLC collaboration? And Vicki, we're going to show you a calendar in just a second that will help us to answer that question, so I'm not going to ignore you. We're going to take you to a different screenshot in just a second, and that will be the screenshot of the calendar. Uh, Sharnice says that's a great question Vicki I have the same and to add on I wonder how often does the group meet together in person so keep that question in mind Frank Cohn is you're still having some in-person PLC meetings and then we're enhancing those with video and um, so let's go ahead and go to the calendar which I think is the next screenshot. Awesome. And so let's answer those questions in terms of when do you start layering these other pieces in? And those other pieces are, when do you start layering in the use of the video library? And when do you start layering in the use of video with your PLCs? So as we're looking at this calendar, just to establish some context, this is the ideal, <laughs> the ideal, not this year because of Hurricane Harvey, we didn't get started in the way that we normally normally do, but this is the ideal implementation calendar that Frank Cohn typically uses. And you can see from the perspective of the administrator and from the teacher what this kind of what this looks like. So August is a time for the administration to launch the use of video and the as Dr. Gorey says the the why you get that one shot to really do that well. September the administrators are working on calibration as the teachers begin self-reflection coaching cycle one and then we join together as we move forward through coaching cycle two and coaching cycle three. So can we answer those questions in terms of when do we start layering in these other pieces as they relate to this calendar? Well, I'll start. Um, we didn't use the video library. Melissa, as she stated, used it by accident the first year. But we really started being intentional about the video library year two and definitely this year in year three, um, we are full speed ahead with the video library. Same with the PLCs. We didn't use the PLCs in, in the very first year. We just went through our three coaching cycles um, and then used it for heavy coaching, of course. Um, and so PLC use about the same time last year and definitely this year. We are in a much better place. And so we are expanding our use of the platform. For people new to Sydney, they may just want to do the coaching cycles. You're going to get a, a lot of bang for your buck using it um, through those three coaching cycles. But as you grow and your staff grows and your culture changes, you continue to increase the use of the platform and therefore we are using it. If you're looking at time frame of the year, there's no, if you're in a, in a good place, there's no 
particular time frame, but I'll let Melissa tell you when she started using the PLCs with her, her grade levels. Well, the PLCs I established pretty much when my partner was gone because I needed it as my, my additional partner. Um, so I did it within pretty much the September, October. So it was really leading into cycle two. Um, the other thing, um, the other question that was asked as far as we meet, these we have grade level weekly meetings and I used the PLC to, to, to thrive that, to, to lead that forward. So it was like, we still met in person. The PLC was like, something you do at home. It was an extra thing, but I would bring it in to the planning as, oh, I need you to notice this. And I would highlight what the teacher is doing. So it's kind of like we're doing two things, but they didn't realize they were doing two things because the other one was on their personal. Okay. <laughs> Heidi, Dr. Gorey, do you want to add anything to that? I think they covered it. All right. So just in respect for time, I'm going to we're going to skip through polling question B, which was just really asking you to think about what the most valuable reason for sharing videos with peers might be. And we're going to move on to just opening up that chat. What questions you have about today's content? If you haven't had a chance to ask those questions, we have these instructional coaches with us today, which has been just a huge benefit to us. Let's take advantage of them and see if we have any additional questions we want to ask of them or Dr. Gorey today before as we're as we're kind of bringing closure to our work together in this webinar. And we're going to give folks some time to ask those questions in the chat as we advertise webinar seven. So webinar seven is scheduled for February the 15th. And we're looking at the value of video enhanced professional learning, this time through the lens of teachers. Today, we are looking through the lens of the instructional coach. And next time, February the 15th, we want to look at it through the lens of the teachers. And we're going to ask them to talk with us about the three coaching cycles, essentially. So talking about the use of video for self-reflection, for their self-selected goal, and for the coach-selected goal as well. So we're looking forward to having the teachers join us. Dr. Gorey, do you want to talk about the homework assignment you have for folks who joined us on today's webinar? Yes, of course, the homework relates to what we've discussed today. Um, looking at the video library, what, are going, what will be your norms and your protocol for using the video library? How often will you expect videos to be added? How will your teachers access it? Um, that's something that I'd like you to think about and decide. When it comes to the experts in your building, how will you systematically choose teachers to post videos in the library? Um, there um, are lots of experts in the building. So we utilize the talent that we have um, definitely by adding videos to our library. And then the PLC portion of it, what will be your timeline? PLCs happen all year long. Will you start from the beginning, putting videos in the library, um, for your PLCs or creating those collaboration huddles, not in the library, but creating those collaboration huddles right away. Um, what will be the purpose for having those collaboration huddles? Think about that, identify your purpose and your timeline for implementation. Very good. So we do have another question in the chat and it's a question from Vicki. Have you used video to refine the skill of coaching adults? Have you used video to refine the skill of coaching adults? We, uh, more clarification needed. Our, we do coach adults, so I'm not sure what the question. I mean, the, um, let's see if Vicki wants to clarify a little bit. I'm going to just take my spin, my turn at uh, uh, interpreting what she's maybe asking here. And I think it goes back, Dr. Gorey, to that time in August and September, whenever you're working with your coaches to calibrate and to think about what the best approach is going to be to provide feedback to the, uh, to the teachers in the building. So we, we look at, again, we're in, in year three. So we looked at how to provide better feedback, um, just not necessarily using the video itself, but because we use the coaching process, we want to make sure that we're providing quality feedback to our teachers. So this, that was our calibration point this year. Um, we've looked at um, identifying teachers in different stages, not necessarily through the use of video, but just through our calibration process. So we do, when we had a new administrator, we did watch the video together, annotate the video so that we both are making sure that we're seeing the same 
um, types of things to provide feedback on. So in that sense, yes, but we are beyond that at this point as a team. We're good with what happens through the video process. We just want to make sure that we continue to refine our skills to be better coaches. And so Vicki did do a little, did elaborate a little bit, and she is asking about that calibration. And I think she's also asking in terms of the, the, the quality or the type of feedback that you give on the video. Do you have conversations about that, Dr. Gorey? What's appropriate feedback? Maybe you have some, maybe you have some starter stems that you use as you're giving feedback. Maybe it's an I wonder, or did you notice? Do you have anything like that? That was actually, again, that was our our coaching calibration for this school year is making sure that we're providing better feedback for better teaching. And we talked about ways to give the feedback, questions that you could ask, and that everybody, everybody is nervous about receiving feedback, regardless of what they may say, oh, I'm okay with feedback. We have to learn how people like to receive their feedback and make sure that we're giving it to them in that in that particular manner so that they will be open and receptive to it. So we do, we look at how we can grow and improve the practice of coaching. And that was definitely one of the areas where, and I think we'll always want to work on that area because feedback changes because your, your, your clientele changes. So um, for sure, that's something we work on. All right. Thank you so much. And again, uh, let's just bring some closure to our work together on today's webinar. Could you let us know in the chat what most resonated with you regarding the content of today's webinar? It would be great for our guests, our instructional coaches, and Dr. Gorey to know what they said that really impacted you. What um, I'll say my quotable quotes phrase, maybe it's not necessarily something you would quote, but an idea that they shared with you today that really resonated or really made sense to you. Uh, could you share with, with us in the chat so that we can just a way of showing a little bit of value for the time they took to be with us today and let us know that there was something that they said that really mattered to you and that really resonated with you. And as you're typing that in the chat, just please feel free to contact contact us at Sydney. We would love to hear from you. We would, if you haven't, if you're not using the platform and, and you would like a free trial, you can contact us about that. If you'd like a full-blown demonstration, we'd love to give you a demonstration of the platform to show you all the whistles and bells. Uh, we'd love for you. And as Dr. Gorey said, I just, I want everybody to have that fire and that desire that she has and has had in you, in terms of using Sydney, because we really believe that it is such a difference maker. So we do have some folks in the chat who are letting us know what resonated with them. And uh, Susan is telling us that the actual coaches who shared their ideas and suggest suggestions sounded real. And I think we do have the real, we do have the, <laughs> we do have the real today. Um, Vicki says she's impressed with the team, Dr. Gorey, and that your emphasis on collaboration and authentic growth. And I think that everything about you and the school and your coaches um, really does shine through. It really is about student, really is about your students. It really is taking care of your teachers and it really shows that authenticity and that, um, that focus of purpose. Does anybody else, if anybody else wants to jump in there and let us know what resonated, we're going to get ready to um, finish up the webinar today. Again, we've got any questions or final questions or anything we want to answer for you. Um, that free Sydney a trial if you're interested. And I'm just going to say, uh, Heidi, Melissa, Dr. Gorey, is there anything that you'd like to say as we wrap things up? Well, Allison, I just wanted to say that you were talking about growth and the points that you put at the back on the huddle, as far as the articles and the resources, I'm like, my brain's already like going crazy because I want to go add, I share articles usually through email, but now I can put them into the huddle uh, collaboratively. So I, it's like, I'm growing. I want more just from what you just shared. Awesome. Thank you. We are definitely not the experts, but we are happy to share our process that has um, had great benefit to our campus, to our students and our staff. And we are learning just as Melissa just got an idea. Mm -hmm. I sometimes jot down things from the questions that the panel, that the participants um, that they ask, I'll jot down something that I want to take back. So we appreciate this opportunity to Mm -hmm. collaborate with the participants. 
Very good. So thank you, Melissa and Heidi and Dr. Gorey. Y'all took, um, you, you took valuable time out of your lives to help prepare for today's webinar, to be, be so thoughtful in how you shared the information in the webinar. We were, really want to thank you. We want to thank the Principal Center and Sydney for sponsoring this webinar series and giving us the opportunity to really show school leaders how to do this, this is such important work. Thank you all very much. We'll see you in February for when we look through when we look through the lens of the teachers, which is always an interesting lens to look through. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.